Jerry says, I'm still trying to process Ben's piece on inflection and its bizarre history and what it means for the broader tech sector, specifically NVIDIA's convoluted role as gatekeeper and investor and seller of rare, of rare jewels, i.e. GPUs. All that is fascinating to me in this story. It seems to me that the arc of innovation is being shaped in large part by who has privileged access to special hardware, in this case, GPUs. That's a tech story we haven't seen in decades or maybe ever. It seems ripe for unintended consequences. So if big tech and the startups they acquire end up winning the AI race in the short term because of their privileged access to NVIDIA's GPUs, it seems like they might be very vulnerable in the long term to outside disruptors who figure out a different and better way to innovate in AI without NVIDIA's help. What do you think? And Ben, I found this interesting because we talk about the hallucinations. It seems like, A, hallucinations are a real problem for enterprise AI applications that could help all this technology transform various sectors of the economy. And B, at least for the last year, as we said earlier, it seems like the proposed solution to the hallucination problem is to just throw more and more and more compute at the problem. It's like the sledgehammer keeps getting bigger as they just swing more and more GPUs at the hallucination issues uh, across all these different products. And so I'm curious what you think of Jerry's theory, because it seems plausible to me that there might be sort of an orthogonal approach that emerges along the way that, that transforms how we understand all of this. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a a subject of hot debate, right? Like, is the transformer model the end-all, be-all? We just need to throw more compute at it. Or do we actually need a fundamental algorithmic breakthrough that does stuff differently to actually make decisions well, right? As opposed right. to, you know, and, and eliminate this problem. I think that's an open question. Uh, I certainly think that, you know, the this... Big tech generally is betting on just throw more compute at it, which makes sense. They have the capability of throwing more compute at it. And and NVIDIA is the kingmaker right now. And yes, it absolutely warps the market. And NVIDIA, like there is one company that sort of dominates the space that is making like decisions based on, are you going to bundle with all our stuff? Are you going to do X, Y, Z? Oh, by the way, our user license agreement says you, you, you can't translate CUDA, right? You're like, right. they're using legal agreements. They're using bundling. They're using all this sort of stuff that is theoretically illegal, but we're going to, you know, like uh just a real classic case of, I can't wait for the NVIDIA antitrust case in 2040. That doesn't <laughs> matter anymore because actually it turned out there was a completely different approach. Let There's me tell also you one a, thing I know I'm, I'm newer to the tech space. NVIDIA never happens without the Microsoft antitrust trial of <laughs> 2001. So I'll just rewrite that complaint for 2040. Uh, but the the other argument, though, is that a new approach actually is good for NVIDIA because GPUs are relatively pro programmable. Like, mm -hmm. I think actually the, the question is when, you know, specialization in this particular sort of approach and getting like specialized chips and, and all this sort of like, once you start streamlining, because you need efficiency, you need you, you like, particularly from an energy perspective, but also speed, also latency, bandwidth, all these sorts of things that are often trade-offs against each other. That means you specialize. The more you specialize, the more rigid you become and the less able you are to sort of adapt to a new paradigm that comes along. Whereas GPUs, definitely better and more efficient than CPUs, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, yet also relatively programmable and can be adjusted to new workloads if what you need generally is parallelism, but how that parallelism is leveraged can sort of differ. All these are, are very much sort of open questions. This is where the energy thing does matter, though, because it is a real forcing function uh, that is can they continue to drive pushes to do this different, right? And so mm -hmm. I think if there is a better way to do it, someone's going to figure it out because there is tremendous economic incentive to figure it out. A and um, just as there's tremendous economic incentive to keep building this out. And, you know, maybe it's going to be a situation, you know, I mentioned the, the, the NVIDIA event made me feel a little bubbly, right? Like there's some of this stuff that is starting to feel like it's getting a little crazy. Like, like what exactly are we using this stuff for, right? Like how right. useful is this? But you can imagine a world like after the dot-com era 
where you had all this bandwidth that was built out, all this dark fiber that actually was completely economically ruinous, but also created the conditions for the actual sort of right. Web 2.0, the online world. Will we get a scenario? It is interesting. People still find A100s pretty useful. They're still buying H100s. Are we going to get in a world at some point where there's a bunch of GPUs out in the world that were already paid for and they're just sitting there and boy, wish someone would use this. And that actually creates the conditions for new sort of use cases and creations where it's actually free, not because we solved energy, because it turned out not that many people wanted to use autocomplete. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people went bust. No, I mean, at the top of that NVIDIA episode a week or two back, the thinking made a lot of sense to me. There, at least the possibility that this is a bubble, but it's directionally correct. It's just everyone's a couple years early. And so there's this huge infrastructure build out and the actual use cases won't materialize, at least in time for everybody to monetize their investments now. But it could still get there a couple years down the line or even further down the line. Um, I mean, yeah, there's right a very now... famous model that is um, Carlota Perez, a um, uh, uh, Venezuelan sort of economist. She was in, in, in the UK now, but she wrote this book called Technological Revolutions of Financial Capital. And, and this is sort of a core thesis of hers, going back and tracing through these major technological revolutions and how it impacted society. And in all of them, in her framework, an essential portion is there's this frenzy period that causes a bubble and the bubble bursts. And it's mm -hmm. actually the bursting of the, it's the frenzy that inspires irrational investment that actually creates the conditions for what comes next. Because like, you know, it was irrational. We go back to the Apple thing, the Apple Vision Pro, right? There's a bit where Apple and what they missed out on was the irrational building of great experiences by developers. What they needed was to excite developers to build an amazing experience on the Vision Pro, even though it was stupid to do so. Right. Why did they do it? Because they were so excited about the Vision Pro, right? And so they missed the irrational era. So they're now in the rational era. They need, so which means they <laughs> need me to check. pay develop. That's right. Where And so th there's a bit where irrational exuberance it sucks for the people that buy into it because they all go bankrupt but it's actually societally speak societally speaking it's very beneficial because you you build up infrastructure that never made sense to build but it got mm -hmm. built <laughs> and so now that <laughs> enables sort of what comes next and and i do think you know there is some aspect here i'm not sure that we've we've so like we are you know at what point is this GPL build out? Is it actually being leveraged? Is it actually being used? The reality is, is I think the safe bet is it will become bubbly. Is it bubbly now to be debated? You know, it's bubbly now when everyone agrees, no, this is not a bubble. This is real. Uh, the moment people stop <laughs> saying it's flag. a bubble <laughs> is the moment you know it's a bubble. Um, and I don't think we're in a bubble yet, but it does. It is feeling a little frothy. Um, yeah. but well, there Sequoia, is a bit they estimated that the AI industry spent fifty billion dollars on NVIDIA chips used to train models and brought in only three billion dollars in revenue. So make of that what you will. That was in the Wall Street Journal this past weekend. God bless them. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. These this is the frenzy that we're counting on to transform society. This is step one. All right.